Hello and welcome to ECE 300, Continuous Time Signals and Systems. I am Professor Carlotta Berry and I will be your instructor for the quarter. I have been teaching at Rose Holman for about 11 years. I started here in about 2006. This is actually my first time teaching this class here at Rose, but I have taught a similar class at my prior university, Tennessee State University. And I have taught some of the prerequisite courses as well as the follow-on courses to this one, which include ECE 203, which is DC circuits, ECE 205, circuits and systems, and ECE 320, which is linear control systems. My area of expertise is controls and robotics, so it's pretty closely related to the content of this course. And this actually explains why you're watching a video instead of seeing me for the first week of class. I am going to be at the Human Robot and Interaction Conference in Chicago, which is my area of expertise. But don't worry, I will be back by Friday, but you have lots of work to do while I'm gone. So today we're going to talk a little bit about what some of what some of that is, as well as what I need you to do. So I have chosen the following diagram to represent the course for the quarter for several reasons. I always like to give some kind of overview to help sequential and global learners to know where we're going and where we're headed and how we're going to get there. So there are three units in this course, including unit one, frequency domain analysis. You will find a lot of that really familiar from your prior course circuits and systems. And then we're going to talk a little about filters, which you also discussed in circuits and systems, but from a different perspective. And then we'll end up the course with sampling and reconstruction. The diagram we have here is showing how you can use harmonics to create a waveform. In this case, you're using sinusoids in order to create a square wave. So what you see here is that the blue is our fundamental harmonic, and that's just a sine wave. And then we have the third harmonic, which is the magenta color. The golden color is the fifth harmonic. And when you add those all together, the resultant is that green waveform. And as you can see, as you continue to add, add more harmonics, this will eventually look like a square wave. You will have assignments where you're going to demonstrate some of this. So be prepared to use lots of MATLAB in your homework. So this course is all about signals and systems modeling. For signals analysis, we use Fourier series Fourier transforms for periodic and aperiodic signals. We talk about filter types and designs, sampling and reconstruction. So the following is a concept map. I like to create these because it helps you to see the global picture for where we're going and what we're working on. So here what you'll see in the middle is I've modified our units so that it actually looks a little bit more like the details of the weeks where we start with the introduction, which we're in now. We do signal operations review, Fourier series, Fourier transforms, filters, and sampling. So first we're going to talk about signal types. Some of this should be reviewed for you, such as sinusoids, complex exponential, which you probably saw in ECE 204 and 205. Then we'll have unit steps, unit ramps, impulse, pulse, triangular pulse, and signum. Then we look at mathematical definitions of signals and descriptions, including shifting and scaling, differentiation and integration even and odd signals, and signal energy and power. Next, we look at different ways to describe systems, such as differential equations and block diagrams, which you will see again in controls, and you also saw in circuits and systems. Then system properties you did in circuits and systems, which are homogeneity, um, linearity, time invariance, stability, causality, memory, and invertibility. And then we have time domain analysis, which you did in circuits and systems, which is convolution, impulse response, step response, transfer functions, and frequency response. You also did frequency response in AC circuits. Then we're going to look at transforms such as Fourier series and Fourier transforms. You did Laplace transforms in circuits and systems. You actually did some Fourier transforms in ACC circuits, but you called it phasor analysis. And then we're going to look at different kinds of sampling, such as impulse, pulse, and zero order hold. There's also first order hold then aliasing, time, and band-limited signals. Frequency response analysis, we're going to look at ideal filters. You also studied this in circuits and systems, as well as practical filters, block diagrams, decibels, passive and active filters. Laplace system analysis you did in circuits and systems. And then filter analysis and design, we're going to look at practical or realistic analog filters, such as Butterworth, Chevy Chef, Elliptic, and Bessel. And that's actually what I like to call the Continuous Time Signals and Systems Circle of Life. This is a very good tool to use for studying because you can look at the different concepts and see where you need to study on the exam or the things that you understand how they're all connected together.
So it's very good, once again, for global as well as sequential learners. Now let's discuss the course materials. Three of the course materials were emailed to you, including the syllabus, the calendar, and the lab safety rules. And these are actually also available on the Moodle course website. You're going to have to get some of your course materials in the bookstore, including the study guide, the lab manual. Shams outline of signals and systems is available on the Access Engineering website online, and you can use the Rose Holman account in order to get to that. There is an optional lab manual in the bookstore, and there's a textbook in the bookstore. So there's a couple of things I want to highlight for you in the syllabus to make sure you're aware of them because your first quiz, which will be due Monday night, will be on the syllabus, the calendar, as well as some of the prerequisite skills you should have learned from circuits and systems. So some things to be aware of in the syllabus. First of all, be aware of expectations that you are to act as a professional at all times. The high level review of all the topics, which I've already discussed in detail in this video that there are going to be three midterms, one practical and one final, and that you must have a passing weighted exam average of at least 60% to pass the course. There are also going to be weekly quizzes on Moodle, typically due on Monday night. This is an individual grade. You are not to do team quiz taking, and they're usually going to be about 10 questions and it'll be multiple choice, and the quiz link will tell you the topics covered in that quiz. There's also weekly homework available for download on Moodle. You will submit it on Friday at the beginning of class, and it will be done using the engineering problem solving format on engineering paper. You can see the details of this format on the Moodle course website. You will have weekly lab memos, memos due in the Moodle Dropbox, and they're always due one week after you complete the lab. Also note that exams are closed book closed notes, although I will typically provide you with a formula sheet, and exams cannot be made up. If there are any regrade requests for exams, you should not write on the exam. You should submit a written memo to me within a week explaining the technical error with your exam. Not agreeing with the amount of points taken out off is not a reason to ask for an exam regrade. During your first lab session, you will complete a concept inventory. There will not be a lab. Just the first 50 minutes will be for that concept inventory. The purpose of the concept inventory is to look at the way that we think about systems and signals, and you're going to take this concept inventory at the beginning as well as at the end of this course in order to assess your learning and understanding of those concepts. Finally, be professional and respectful to all members of the class at all time, and make sure you're always in, clay, in class engaged and attentive. And any more than eight absences is grounds for failure in a four credit hour course. Here we have your course calendar. Make sure you review the calendar before taking the first quiz because there are some quiz questions on the calendar. So the first things you should notice is that that first quiz is due by midnight on Monday and that your homework is due at the beginning of class on Friday. Note that during your lab session, first hour only, you will have the concept inventory. It will be administered by Dr. Kim and the purpose of the concept inventory is to help with assessment tools to test your conceptual understanding of linear signals and system concepts in your engineering courses. Make sure you go on Moodle to complete the consent form before your lab session. You will have midterms during weeks three, six, and nine, a lab practical test during week seven. Note that the first week you only have a quiz and a homework due, Week two, you will have quiz, a pre-lab, and homework due. But then from that week on, you will also have weekly pre-labs. Lab safety rules. Your labs will be completed in B200. So you should look over the document for the rules for B200. Note that there's no food or drink within four feet of the lab bench. So you should store all food in, on the table at the front of the room. There's also no soldering, drilling, or sawing or non-circuit fabrication in this room, and you must wear solid sole footwear at all times. There must be at least two students in the room at all times outside of normal work day hours. Please do not leave the doors propped open or leave your materials at a bench during the day while you go to class or leave for the night. We're instituting a new accountability system this quarter. So if you break any of the lab rules, you will be giving first a warning. And on the second occurrence, you will lose privileges to use the lab outside of class time. 
Finally, the study guide is more like our lecture notes, but it also has formulas, tables, the concept map, etc. I use it extensively during class, but if you prefer to take notes by hand in a spiral notebook, please feel free to do that if you can keep up. The reason I use a study guide is because it helps the active as well as the reflective learner, and it gives you a good study tool to prepare for the quizzes and the exams. So just to review the assignments for um, this first week, quiz one is due Monday, your homework is due Friday, and you also need to watch lecture videos one one and one two, and you need to complete readings on the homework procedure and lab procedure. Quiz one will have 10 questions, including topics such as the syllabus, calendar, and prerequisite material from ECE 205, including integrals, impulse, and math expressions. Remember, quizzes are an individual grade. Homework one will have 11 problems. Six of them will be on access engineering on the Shams outline for signals and systems. And the topics include periodicity, LTI system, signal operations, convolution, steady state response. 11 problems is a really long homework assignment. So I recommend that although it's mostly review, start early. I also recommend that you join a study group and that you have classmates to study with because this class can get intense very quickly. So it's very important to have good study habits. Here is the Moodle course website, and what you should see at the very top is the syllabus and the calendar in case you lose your copies. There's a hyperlink to the Shams outline of signals and systems, which you will need for your homework and to study for quizzes. And then there's an informed consent form for the concept inventory that you will need to complete before your first lab session. Under supplemental materials, you have some things that will help you with homework and with lab and with pre-labs, including MATLAB handouts, decibel review, complex numbers for your transforms, and several hyperlinks to the prerequisite course, ECE 205, Circuit and Systems, including course notes, a study guide, and the YouTube playlist of lectures that you may want to review if there's anything you're a little weak on from the prerequisite course. Lectures, there's nothing there, but eventually there will be videos um, on the lectures, some of them anyway, including the one that I am doing right now. Homework will be under here. Make sure you review the guidelines and the procedure before submitting your homework. Your first homework assignment is already there and available. Under labs, we have the lab procedure guidelines, the signal explorer board overview, which you'll use for all your labs, a manual for the oscilloscope that you'll use in lab. Remember, we're not doing lab one, we're skipping that one. So we have the lab two procedure, the data memo you would download and complete every week, as well as the drop boxes where you will upload the labs every week. Remember the lab data memo is due one week after you start the lab. The next hyperlink is to quizzes. So that's for every quiz in the course, including quiz one that's due Monday night. Notice that the topics are to the side of the quiz so that you know what you should review before you start the quiz. There are 45 minutes and typically about 10 questions. And then the final hyperlink is on exams. Right now there's nothing there except a couple of old exams by Dr. Paget and Dr. Kim. Since this is my first time teaching the course at Rose, unfortunately you have none of my old exams, but that still gives you a good guide for how to study. Finally, what should you do if you have questions? Well, there's several things you can do. Number one, you can email me. Um, I'm pretty addicted to answering my email, unfortunately. So if I am awake and near my cell phone, I'm probably going to answer your email. Um, I don't have any set office hours, but if I am in my office and the door is open, feel free to pop in and ask me any questions. You can also check my calendar on Outlook and always send me a meeting request if there's a specific time you want to come talk to me. Always bring questions to class as well because some of your classmates probably can benefit from any question that you have. Or if I am just simply not available at all and you need help with an assignment, you can go see Dr. Paget, Dr. Kim, Dr. Simone, or Dr. Throne. And finally, have a wonderful and awesome quarter. I look forward to seeing you at the end of next week.